And welcome to The Bottom Line, where we unpack some of the main business and economic stories of the day. On the bottom line today, we want to look at the challenges Poland faces in taking that leap to make nuclear energy a reality. As much as we hear that the green energy transition is an urgent priority for Poland, the challenges lie in the lack of a systemic implemented strategy and vision. The decision itself and the plans have been there for a number of years now, but it seems like the government hasn't been able to get the ball rolling. I'm now joined by Paweł Gaida, director of the Nuclear Energy Department at the Polish Ministry of Industry. Hello and thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Thank you. Good afternoon. So uh, Poland has barely started work on the first nuclear power plant and there's already a lot of talk about the second one. And by the end of November, the government will publish an updated nuclear uh, strategy. And one of the big questions, if not the biggest question, is where will that second power plant be? Of course, selection of the second site for the second nuclear power plant is a process that will still take some time. Because to have the final decision, we need to make uh, several different analyses to check, for example, things like the geology on the site. So right now, what we are planning to do in the revised version of the Polish nuclear power program is to provide a short list of possible sites where we plan to start this type of work and to be able to make this final decision within a year or two. Uh, this decision will be, of course, connected to the decision for the technology for the for the second site, and uh, because that's the process that will take some time, we want to start it right now. Are you able to give us any idea where this location might be? Because trade unions are obviously affected by this decision. Uh, they say that the second power plant should be built where uh, coal assets. Are located and this obviously is uh, due to the concern that the local economies might be adversely impacted uh, once coal is phased out so that would obviously suggest places like Belhatov, maybe Konin, maybe Turov. Uh, can you give us any hint of where that might be? So for the, I would say, final uh, shortlist, I would need to, uh, we'll need to wait for the, for the final announcement. But I can say that we are looking into this exact problem. So uh, we would like to have those sites being located in the places that uh, currently we have coal power fired power plants uh, for several reasons. One is, of course, uh, existing grid connections to simply replace currently running uh, coal power sources with nuclear ones. Uh, that approach wouldn't require uh, changes into uh, the electrical grid architecture. So that would be a little bit cheaper than building in complete greenfield localization when you need to also build the uh, energy transfer infrastructure. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, the second reason is because it's, of course, good for the economy economy uh, for the region, because there are several regions in Poland, and we are completely aware of that, that would need that new investments uh, to replace currently existing assets, like, for example, uh, coal fire power plants, also coal mines, and nuclear can be one of these type of investments that will allow uh, to have this um, transformation done uh, properly without uh, hurting economically uh, such regions. Uh, but this benefit is also mutual because in these places where currently we have uh, coal-fired power plants, there exists a lot of uh, competence in terms of operation of power plants, in terms of uh, maintenance. So that can be also useful for uh, for construction and then operation and maintenance of the nuclear power plants. That's why we will be looking into this type of location. So. Uh, I might say that anyone who knows the geography of Polish power sector wouldn't be surprised with, with this shortlist. How many, how many locations are on your shortlist? Uh, we are still deciding, but there will be a couple of them. Okay, so it's quite short. It, that's, that, will be, that will be quite short, yes. Okay. Uh, another question is uh, the technology provider. How many contenders have you got? Uh, so that's the process that will be started. We are uh, right now working on defining how the process uh, would exactly look. Uh, of course, there will be kind of competitive process. Mm, and we are looking on exactly what elements of bits we are expecting, because that's not only a matter of the technology itself, that's also uh, 
a uh, matter of uh, EPC uh, contractor, that's also a matter of any additional elements that would like to have, for example, things like additional financing, that could be equity in the, uh, in the power plant, but also different uh, provided types of uh, uh, low interest loans. That's also things like uh, maybe some other possible investments in Poland, uh, technology transfer. So we are currently looking on what elements of such bit would be expecting to start next year this uh, dialogue with possible contractors and have this uh, possible strategic uh, partner selected as soon as possible. Is Japan in the game? Uh, so currently, if we look at uh, partners that are providing uh, nuclear power plants and can supply us with, uh, with such type of uh, technology, there are realistically three possible partners. So that's France, that's United States and South Korea. Mm -hmm. Of course, it is still possible that uh, there could be kind of joint bid with uh, some possible different partners, but that will be uh, a matter of how those possible partners would decide they will follow with the uh, with the actual process. So we've heard that Westinghouse has already lobbied the Polish government uh, to purchase more reactors for a 20% discount. Are you able to tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, so, of course, we are talking with all those possible partners. Every partner, of course, uh, they want to uh, point to the benefits of they offer. Uh, but uh, we are still waiting to define what exactly we are expecting and then we'll start this uh, real process of selecting the, uh, the partners for the technology and other elements. Uh, there's obviously the concern that if Poland chooses some other uh, technology provider other than the US, that that might actually cause some tensions. Are you afraid that perhaps one morning you might wake up to see perhaps an angry tweet from Donald Trump to the effect that, you know, Poland has made a stupid choice not choosing American technology? What would you do then? Uh, of course, uh, nuclear power program has uh, something really important. It has ge uh, geopolitical implications. Uh, that's why we are not only selecting the technology. Uh, it's better to say about choosing the strategic partner. Mm -hmm. But I would say that every uh, possible partner has its also geopolitical benefits. For example, France, as our partner in the EU, also has its merits. So that will be something that we will be recommending what's the uh, best way forward. But of course, the final decision will be made on the governmental level. Of course. Um, another interesting aspect of this is this idea of local content, a phrase that has been uh, coined recently. How much of the nuclear power plants will actually be produced in Poland, this local content? So. We as uh, Ministry of Industry would like to have uh, our Polish industry involved as much as possible. Uh, our target for the first unit is around 40% and having it increasing unit by unit. So that's something that we are working on. It's, uh, it of course uh, requires a lot of preparation. Uh, we already have started some programs that would help uh, from one side prepare uh, by Polish companies to get into nuclear supply chain because that requires uh, introduction of nuclear standards where the quality control levels are really, really high. So that's one thing we're doing. We're also trying to promote Polish companies abroad. There are several Polish companies that already did a lot of work in uh, different construction sites for nuclear power around the world. So they already have some experience and we hope that they will only uh, gain more during the, uh, the construction process in Poland. But we would like uh, to help them to learn how to get into the nuclear sector and then also get the benefits from possible construction that will be started soon in other European countries because it's not only Poland that it's uh, looking and starting uh, construction with nuclear power plants. There are also programs with new boats in, for example, Czech Republic. Uh, France is starting uh, several 
several new units. Netherlands are looking into that. Uh, also Slovakia, uh, Bulgaria. So there's a group of European countries. And we would like to also, for Polish companies, not only benefit from the Polish program, but also be uh, for them to uh, take part in the construction abroad. 40% is very, very ambitious. Is it realistic? Because the windshore uh, farms are looking at 15 to 20% of local content. So, of course, that's a target. It's a, an ambitious goal, for sure, but uh, we'd like to have it because uh, it's really important that having this strategic investment uh, it's important that uh, if we are going to spend a lot of money into the, uh, not only the program, but uh, the energy transition uh, in general, it's really important to have as much as possible stay here in Poland, to use this opportunity to create some new technologies that will be then uh, applied in other sectors and uh, use this opportunity of nuclear program to have kind of the quantum leap in terms of uh, energy, the technology development in Poland in general. My last question as we wrap up very briefly, 2035, 11 years away, is that realistic? Would you bet your money for that first power plant? Oh, that's, uh, that's always tricky because that's the current target. It's, of course, ambitious one. Uh, those are very complicated and difficult projects. So there is always possibility that something will go wrong and there will be some, uh, some delays. Uh, but we are not expecting that those delays, if they happen, they will be very, very significant. Okay. Pavel Gaida, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. That was Paweł Gajda, director of the Nuclear Energy Department at the Polish Ministry of Industry. And I was your host, Marie Kato. Make sure you join us every weekday for Business Arena at 5 p.m. CET on TVP World. And for the latest in regional business, follow us on X and on tvpworld.com. And for more news and features, stay with us on TVP World. Goodbye.